In Money Watch, as President Biden's climate agenda is stalled in Congress, one controversial carbon reduction technology is garnering significant attention from lawmakers. The Department of Energy has invested in 11 carbon capture projects since 2009. Roughly three quarters of the projects were committed to clean coal. However, none of these facilities are open today. A CBS News article explores the technology and how, quote, Congress is spending billions on carbon capture and asks, while it is good in theory, is it really a climate savior? So joining us now for more on this is the author of the article and CBS News Money Watch reporter Irina Ivanova. Irina, great to see you. So tell us exactly why Congress is pouring record amounts of money into this largely unproven technology. Thank you. Uh, this funding, you know, comes at a very interesting time. Over the past couple of years, climate authorities have come out and said that carbon capture is going to be necessary to meet our climate goals. Uh, one carbon capture expert told me that if we're going to reach a net zero world, which is where we don't emit any more carbon pollution than we remove from the air, carbon capture is going to be as important as solar, as nuclear energy or wind, and as eating less meat. And there are a lot of industrial processes that create carbon pollution. Uh, that are very hard to decarbonize. So uh, things like cement, uh, steel, making fertilizers, all these places emit a lot of carbon. So in addition uh, to switching to clean energy, electrifying transportation, making agriculture more climate friendly, all these things that we've already heard about, they say we will need to use carbon capture to just bring down the carbon pollution from those very hard to decarbonize sources. So in the last couple of years, there have been billions of dollars now allocated to getting more of these types of projects up and running and to find out if they can work at a large scale. Arena, the Department of Energy has invested in 11 projects to demonstrate how this technology works, uh, eight of which have been power plants. One was launched in 2017, but none are actually up and running. Why is that? That's right. Two things to know about carbon capture are that, one, the technology can work. It's been shown to work. And two, it's been nearly impossible for it to work profitably, and certainly not on power plants. Uh, the one plant that did open in 2017 uh, was the Petronova facility in Texas, and it ran for three years before it closed. And the reason it closed is because the owner wasn't making enough, enough money from selling the captured CO2. Uh, so in this case, it really comes down to the economics of coal plants. Uh, in a lot of places, coal is already the most expensive source of power, and putting carbon capture technology on just makes it even more expensive. Uh, and power plants are for-profit entities. Uh, their owners want to make money. And if that plant's uh, owners find themselves with a lot of added costs, often they'll just choose to close the plant uh, and to use something less expensive. That could be natural gas, that could be solar, that could be wind farms. That's interesting, Irina. So you're saying we have seen examples of this carbon capturing technology work effectively, but unfortunately, these examples have been largely closed down, or at least these private, uh, you know, companies that are doing this. So is there anything uh, floating around Congress that might consider subsidizing private companies to do this work? So there is something uh, in consideration now in the Build Back Better Act, which of course has stalled. Uh, but there, there are these uh, tax credits now that uh, companies can get if they capture carbon and if they put it underground, if they don't use it. Um, that is currently about uh, $45 per ton. Um, that is hotly debated because a lot of people want to increase those tax credits to actually make it more profitable for companies uh, to not pollute and to keep that pollution out of the air. Um, of course, uh, that's that's been a major problem with these projects is the, the question, you know, once you've captured the carbon, what do you do with it? Historically, uh, companies that have successfully used carbon capture tend to sell that CO2. They sell it to oil companies to actually extract more oil uh, from an environmental point of view. That is the last thing that we want to be doing. Uh, we want to keep it permanently out of the atmosphere. Of course, most companies will not do that unless they figure out a way to do that profitably. So we know where some of the money is going, but how much exactly has Congress um, collectively spent on funding this carbon capturing? So in the decade after the Great Recession, uh, we've spent about $8 billion uh, on different carbon capture projects. That's according to the Congressional Research Service. 
In just the last two years, Congress has allocated $17 billion uh, to various carbon projects. So that is a really major ramp up of funding for these types of uh, technologies. All right. Well, Irina, but it does sound like it works. It sounds like what needs to happen is we have to figure out a way to make it profitable and figure out what to do with the carbon capture once it's, uh, you know, accumulated. Right, Mm -hmm. Irina? That's exactly right. And and that's what defenders of this technology are saying. They're saying we just need to put more money into the problem to figure out how to really run it at scale. And they actually draw an analogy with uh, solar and wind. You know, these technologies were very expensive not that long ago Mm -hmm. uh, through lots of research and development and some government funding. They've been now they've now become the cheapest sources of new power. They're saying we just need to do the same with carbon capture. Environmentalists say, you know, there's a limited amount of money. Uh, spend it on what we know works, green energy, and let's not spend more money on this uh, unproven technology. All right, Irina Ivanova, thank you. Thanks for having me.